Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, tutorial about uh, Jupiter. This is the first part and it will be an introduction to the system. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, IPython, um, um, this is the third uh, version of um, IPython named uh, Jupiter. Um, <coughs> Uh, excuse me. Uh, it's a um, web-based interactive development environment. It supports multiple languages uh, like uh, Julia, Octave, Python, and R in alphabetical order. Uh, to upgrade uh, to the new version, if you still have uh, version um, 1 or 2, you can update to the new version with this command. So do pip uh, install, uh, upgrade, and IPython. Make sure you um, put double quotes and all because if you'll install it like this sudo pip install upgrade ipython you might get terminal unavailable if you want to start a new terminal inside um, Jupyter which is one of the exciting new features about Jupyter um, enabling uh, python 3 um, we will be working in here using a python 3 kernel so to enable uh, python 3 uh, you have to run this command um, so do um, ipython3 kernel specs install uh, dash self uh, and that will install the kernel for python3 so why is it called jupiter anyway um, it represents the planet uh, jupiter and three of the um, three of the galilean moons are available in uh, are visible in the um, um, logo um, and the name represents the new direction of uh, IPython development. They are moving away from linking the um, IPython platform with a single language. Um, the way it currently works is as follow, and I have to stress this is just an estimation of the design. Um, uh, so there is an interface level. Uh, you can run a Python console, notebook, uh, IPython QT console, and each one of these will connect connect to a kernel. The thing we're interested in is the IPython notebook. Each IPython notebook will co connect to a separate kernel, but they're all from the same type. So if you start an IPython server with kernel, um, with the um, Python 3 kernel, all your notebooks will use that kernel. Of course, you can use magic, but that's a different thing. Um, but uh, now with uh, Jupyter, um, you can start a Jupyter server and you can start a notebook for, uh, for Python 3, another uh, notebook with um, Python 2 kernel, R, Julia, and other kernels. Uh, if you look in here at um, File, New Notebook, you will see that I have few kernels available for me. Um, so, um, the name uh, came from Julia, Python, and R, so Jupyter. And this is not to indicate that Jupyter only supports these languages, but it's a reference to a talk by uh, Fernando Perez. The complete list um, has more than 15 languages, uh, so it supports more than 15 languages. Uh, but there is another reason. Galileo documented his observations about Jupiter's moons and published them in the Sidrus Nuncius, the Starry Messenger, back in 1610, which was a pamphlet that he published. Um, this was the first paper ever published about astronomy that used observation using a telescope. Um, he has proven that the Earth orbits the Sun like um, Jupiter's moon orbit Jupiter. And these are his notebooks. You can see he has... Um, um, titles, um, data points, um, uh, drawings, images, explanation, uh, reasoning, and it's all there. And this was one of the first notebooks. And this is the uh, this is what they are trying to carry out in IPython. Uh, sharing these observations and uh, conclusions um, in a way that can be replicated and verified inspired modern scientific method. This was uh, this is what IPython notebook is uh, used for, sharing the complete process with others to verify your process and replicate your results. So what's new with version 3? Um, uh, version 3 will be the last monolithic release of IPython. So if you look at IPython, you have a lot of features that are IPython specific and 
many features that can be used for any kernel, like the IPython notebook um, um, format or um, or the um, web's, uh, web web um, socket system to um, uh, process uh, your code in a back end and return it back, or or a lot of other things within IPython. So they're trying to split the project into Python specific components and language acquis- um, agnostic uh, components. Um, so the new features um, uh, are you can start uh, notebooks with um, different uh, kernels from the same server. You can uh, start a new text file, folder, or a terminal session. And text file means you can start basically uh, any text-based file. It can be an XML file, HTML, Python, or JavaScript, anything you need. And it has highlighting for all of these languages. Uh, Second thing is um, Unicode um, identifier. Um, This works with um, Python 3 and Julia. Um, Before, you used to have to copy and paste your um, codes from somewhere. Uh, now we can just um, type um, backslash alpha, oh sorry, um, uh, alpha and press tab and it will change that into an alpha sign. Um, you can uh, get um, any of the um, Greek uh, letters. You can get a small or a capital uh, letter by changing the first letter from lambda to lambda. You get small and capital lambda. Um, and if you're, um, and this is uh, one thing I noticed, some of the characters are not monospaced. So this one is a little thinner than one monospace, and this one is a little larger than one monospace. It might make your code a little um, unorganized, so you, that's one thing to watch out for. Um, and you can use this as a part of um, a variable name. So you could call it, for example, I don't know, SVM alpha or something. There is no SVM alpha. But uh, anyway, you get the point. Um, widgets are not backward uh, compatible. Um, I will um, be recording a, spe- uh, a specific um, tutorial, a separate tutorial for for um, working with um, widgets in IPython 3. Um, but this is a link for uh, migrating your current code um, with the widgets. Um, no header cells. If you start um, a header cell now, it will just make a markdown cell. Uh, but the good thing, you can just use markdown code, um, a he- heading code inside your markdown cell, and it will still create this beautiful mark uh, bookmark uh, link to it. Um, uh, text editor. Um, it's a multilingual text editor, but let's jump into the system to see that. Um, in here, this is the new interface for uh, the file browser. You can see that we can click on something to duplicate, rename, shut down, or delete the file. Um, if you click on new, you will see um, a list of things that I have. Uh, I can start a text file folder terminal or um, some uh, or any notebook with uh, with these uh, kernels. Um, so uh, for the text editor, I will be opening this file. It's um, it's just an HTML file. It doesn't have much in it. It's um, just have two fields and some um, AJAX um, uh, code to send some data to the server and re- receive some results and show them. Um, the the nice thing uh, the it will uh, highlight the document according to the um, extension of the file, and it has support for so many um, programming and scripting languages in here. So um, that's a good new uh, feature. Um, one last thing you might notice that we have all kinds of um, files. Um, showing up now so um, before it used to show only folders and uh, notebooks now you can um, uh, see other files and open them in the text editor Um, a static file server Uh, you can serve um, static files basically any file uh, that's in your um, notebook uh, folder can be served as a static file including your notebooks 
uh, which uh, something that you have to uh, watch out for. And due to the fact there is a static file server in, um, in uh, Jupyter, it's uh, advised that you use HTTPS even if you are running on a local server. But the upside, you can start with exploring some data and end up with a running web-based uh, application without ever leaving the Jupyter environment. Um, you might um, not want to use the static server for production, but it's perfect for development, and I will demonstrate this. Um, this is my file. I can um, serve it as a static file, but just by changing edit into files, and I can see my um, um, file in here. Um, I can use it to send um, 2 plus 3 calculate equals 5 um, and um, that's all done within um, the um, uh, Jupyter environment I didn't have to use any third-party tool to do any of that um, there's a built-in terminal uh, actually this calculation is being done in a um, flask um, web service and I'm running the web service from within the Jupyter environment using the new feature of um, terminal sessions. And the nice thing, I can watch all my things now um, from a single place. So I see all my terminals in here. I know my web service is running and I can um, check my uh, Python code, my uh, HTML code, all from uh, the same place. Um, the last thing is um, Jupyter Drive. You can share Jupyter Notebooks from Google Drive using the new um, Jupyter Drive. This allows you to share Jupyter Notebooks like MB Viewer um, with all um, with all the um, access uh, control that uh, Google provides. So you can share notebooks with specific people or leave them public. So you can um, have this kind of uh, access control. You can also install um, Jupyter Drive locally. This allows you to access uh, notebooks on your Google Drive or other notebooks shared with you. It also allows you to access notebooks on your local machine. So it will be an environment that you can uh, work with um, things from your Google Drive or things shared with you um, to work or something or things on your local drive. So uh, to see that, um, that's my uh, Google Drive. I can have few um, IPython notebooks in here. If I double click on this one, uh, you get a connected app. You have to connect uh, the Jupyter uh, Collaboratory app uh, to do that. But once you click on this, it will open the notebook for you. Um, you can um, edit the notebook from here. Um, you can add new code or um, or um, um, uh, markdown cells. Uh, you can edit your code, you can edit your markdown code and save and it will save it directly into your um, um, Google Drive, basically. Um, this uh, tutorial is available open source on uh, GitHub and it's viewable on MB Viewer. Feel free to use any of this code for any purpose you have. Uh, I hope you liked this uh, tutorial and um, if you did, please subscribe to this channel and you can watch the next part of this series, um, which will be about Markdown and LaTeX. If you're still stuck with version 2, I first I advise you to um, upgrade to version 3, but if you're still stuck with version 2, there is another tutorial about uh, version 2 uh, by clicking in here. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.